Rebecca Wesley, and this is my UA Huntsville Biology 120 project on the evolution of plants from water to land and the differences between extent plants. When plants first started to emerge from water, they faced two big problems, which were how to get the water and nutrients they needed to survive and support against gravity. The first adaptation to these problems that these newcomers to land called non-vascular plants made was to simply stay small and near the ground for support against gravity and to stay near water in a moist environment. They do not have tap roots but have rhizoids to stay attached and not wash away. Staying near water is also advantageous for non-vascular plants because they do not have a means to reproduce other than to release their flagellated sperm directly into the nearby water. Non-vascular plants come in three different varieties, liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. For plants to grow above a certain height, they had to develop a specialized cuticle tissue to allow them to retain water. They did this through tracheas, which were specialized cylindrical tube cells within the evolving plant's stem that allowed the transport of water and other nutrients to and from the soils. This internal development, nearly 50 million years after the emergence of non-vascular plants, gave rise to vascular plants, which eventually separated into seedless and seeded, or flowering. Another major evolutionary development that occurred during this vascular plant evolution was pollen, which allowed plants to send their gametes through the air, eliminating the need for water for plants to pass gametes for reproduction. Seedless vascular plants were the first of these two vascular types, and within this type, there are two varieties, Lycophyta which are club mosses, and pterophyta, which are ferns and horsetails. The further evolution of plants came when vascular plants divided into two groups by developing seeds as a reproduction method around 200 million years after the development of the first seedless vascular plants. Seeds have allowed flowering vascular plants to move all over land and into new environments it would have previously been very difficult for them to reach. This third plant variety consists of two types. Gymnosperms, which are plants with unenclosed seeds, such as conifers, and angiosperms, which have encased seeds and flowering parts. This flowering variety of seeded vascular plants is further divided through whether they are monaceous, which means that both the male and female reproductive parts for that particular plant are in the same plant, or if they are dioecious, which means that there is only one sex per plant. The best ways to tell if a flowering vascular plant is a monocot or a dicot is to look at physical characteristics of the plant, such as the number of petals, the root system, and the vein structure of the leaves. Monocots have petals and multiples of three, have fibrous root systems, and have parallel veins in their leaves. Dicots have petals that come in multiples of four or five, a tap root, and have net-like veins in their leaves. This concludes the evolution of plants from water To land and how to understand the plants that make up the beautiful world that you walk past every day.